Praise the Lord. So let's take a look in the Word of God, and I'm trying to, uh, uh, but I want to take my time because you, you, you got to know this dimension. Say, I got to understand this dimension of authority. Amen. You got to understand this dimension. So it's almost like another dimension of authority, amen, that, that you don't leave it on the table. Don't let that joke off the hook. So let's take a look in the, at the book of Luke, the 11th chapter, and, and upstairs, uh, let's do 2021 20, and 22. I guess we'll do them all. 2021 20, and 22, but 21 and 22 is what I'm after. Jesus says, but if I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come unto you. He says, when a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. He says, but when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusted and divided his spoils. Amen. Then Colossians, the second chapter, verse 15. Colossians, the second chapter, verse 15, the Bible says, And having spoiled principalities, powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Today's message, spoil the enemy. Spoil the enemy. This word, spoil. This word spoil, uh, amen, means to divest, the opposite of invest, but divest, strip, and to take everything he's got, amen? Say divest, strip, and take everything he got. Now, I want you to say it with attitude. Say divest, strip, and take everything he got. Come on, thank the Lord, Amen and take everything that he's got. The Bible here says, amen, in Luke eleven twenty one. 21, if I could begin with that first particular passage, Luke eleven twenty one. 21, it says, when a strong man armed keepeth his palace now, and, and his goods are in peace, all right? But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all of his armor when he trusted and divided his spoils. In other words, when the stronger comes, he divests, strips, and takes everything that he has. Jesus is the the the, the rulers of that day are, are are debating on how Jesus is casting out devils. And they said, you a devil yourself casting out devils. And Jesus said, now, hold on a minute now. He said, now, devil's more than that. He said, because now, he says, now, if a house divided ain't going to stand, right? And he said, but now, your folks are exorcists. How they cast out the devil? He said, but now, if I cast out the devil, amen, uh, by the Spirit of God, by the finger of God, guess what? The kingdom of God has come among you. Come on, thank the Lord. Glory to God. The kingdom of God, amen, is come among you. Amen? Praise the Lord. Now, when a stronger, when, when a stronger overcomes him, he disarms. Jesus said, he said, uh-uh, the power I'm using is stronger. That may be some power, amen, but the power that I'm using is stronger, praise the Lord. If I could use for an example, amen, how uh, faith works, and I want y'all to understand that faith is not just believing. Faith is believing. Faith is operating. Faith is walking in. Faith is gaining knowledge of, amen, that faith is gaining uh, uh, understanding, that's what faith in God. Faith in God is not just I believe in God. The devils believe in God. They know he exists, amen. But faith in God is teaching you how to live. It's a new way of life. Listen, we're teaching you this now and especially in this hour because I'm going to tell you, it's hard. Amen. There's a difference between faith and crisis management. When things get shown up crazy and you ain't got faith and now you're running around trying to find faith, that's crisis management. But faith in God causes us, amen, to go from one level, amen, to, a next to the next level in Jesus' name. 
Praise the Lord. So if I could just give you a, uh, a visual illustration, amen, of how God takes the stronger, amen, how he's even created in nature, amen, for things to function where there are certain laws, amen, but we have to use a higher law to overcome that law. Amen. And one of those things is in the area of flight, in the area of flight. Of course, you know the history of the Wright brothers uh, where they were told man cannot fly. Well, they couldn't fly then. Amen. But the Wright brothers learned something. The Wright brothers learned, amen, of, of the, the, the things that are necessary, amen, to fly. In other words, there's some things in place that don't let people fly, but if I overcome those things, guess what we can do? We can fly. Amen. Can I get that uh, picture, please? Praise the Lord. Glory to God. If you take a look, there are four elements uh, involved in flight. Praise the Lord. And there are two of those elements are negative elements that seem that would keep you from being able to fly. That's the elements of gravity. Gravity creates drag and gravity creates weight. And if you notice, where's gravity pointing? It's pointing down. Amen. And, and where's the drag? In the back trying to hold you down. Do y'all see that? Amen. But there are two laws that are greater that overcome that allow flight. One is thrust. Thrust overcomes drag. And if I get enough thrust and there's enough thrust with the winds going over the wing, it now creates lift. And now guess what? Planes just fly every day. They don't even think nothing about it. See, so so I don't have to deny gravity. Oh, ain't no such thing. Yeah, it is. I don't have to deny drag. What do I do? I just overcome it. And if I overcome them, if I, if I overcome them with enough thrust and enough lift, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to fly. Can y'all thank the Lord for that? Amen. Praise the Lord. See, see so, so, so we don't have to be in a denial. You can come to me. We don't have to be in denial of things. We don't have to be in denial. Amen. But what faith is trying to do, and as I'm trying to show us, it's faith that's trying to help us be transformed into the greater. See, that's what faith is trying to do. You, you, you fighting gravity. You fight your gravity and your drag is where you come from. Your gravity and your drag is what you believe. Your gravity or, or the weight, because what gravity is the weight of the, you actually literally have to overcome the weight of the object. Okay, and so so the weight, uh, your weight is your past. Your weight is what you believe. Your your what's holding you down, Amen. Praise the Lord. Might be what somebody else did, but you refuse, Amen, to believe what God says, Amen. See, because here here's your thrust. Can I give you your thrust and your lift, Amen? Praise the Lord. God wants you to be transformed into the greater because you cannot. Uh, divest, strip, and take advantage of your adversary if you don't operate as the greater. You can say life not fair, 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 fair. You can't do it. You can't do it. Amen. Praise the Lord. That Bible says when a stronger, look at verse 11 and 22. One more time. Put it on the screen. Verse 11. When a stronger, when a what? Stronger than he. What does he do? Come upon him and what? Overcome him. You can't, you can't take nothing from this person if you can't overcome him. You see that? He, when he overcomes him, now he does what? Takes his armor that he trusts in. And now what else? Everything else that he got. Come on, thank the Lord. Y'all see this? Amen. Praise the Lord. And so what God, so I'm trying to, Help this church, praise the Lord, grab a hold of that, uh, amen, to be transformed and to walk in the greater who God has called you to be, amen? That's what transformation is all about. Transformation, amen, is you finally being transformed into who God called you to be. Now, uh, many of us, including myself, uh, we've labeled ourselves. How did you label yourself? You labeled yourself where you come from. You labeled yourself from your experience. You label your uh, you labeled yourself from what you heard others say, the culture that you're around. Well, guess what? The kingdom is a culture. 
See, and so what, what God is saying is, well, when are you going to believe what I say about you? I said you're a son of God and a firstborn son, whether you're male or female. You get the choice. You get the best. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Everything that your father had, you've inherited. Somebody ought to thank the Lord for that right now in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Amen. See, that's transformation. Amen. You got you to gotta, you gotta believe it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because uh, elsewise, drag and your weight going to hold you down. See, but God is saying he wants us to be transformed. Amen. Now, I'm going to, I got to move on. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Transformation. Why are we praying in the Holy Ghost? To be transformed. You ain't praying in the Holy Ghost just to be praying in the Holy Ghost because you're Pentecostal. Oh, we Pentecostal. We pray in the Holy Ghost. And what that mean? And you the worst person on the job? You got something, but I don't know if it's the Holy, it's all of the Holy Spirit. You understand? You got some tongues, but is it the Holy Spirit? You're the worst person on the job. They hate to see you come in the door. The Holy Ghost should have been told you how to fix that. How you didn't listen? Do y'all understand what I'm saying? See, so, because when you listen, that's when you are transformed. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? All right? Confessing the Word of God. Why do we want you to confess the Word of God? So that you changed. Amen. So that you're changed, so that you're transformed. Why do we want you to look at the Word of God? So that you're transformed into the very thing that you see. Are y'all hearing me, saints of God? See, it's the transformation that causes you, amen, to overcome the drag, that overcomes the weight, that overcomes the gravity. I don't have to deny the weight. I don't have to deny the drag. I don't have to deny gravity. I don't have to deny none of it. But what God is saying, but if I can get you to believe that you're the greater, guess what? You get to overcome it. Come on, thank the Lord. Amen.